Okay, then if we have a look at um, structures, statically determinate structures that exist in a plane, um, we've come across in the level four structural mechanics, um, simply supported beams where one support, and we will call that support A, so we have A at this side and B here, so a simple beam with two supports A and B. A is restrained or provides restraint um, and therefore can generate a reaction in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction. B is on rollers um, and so it can generate a reaction in the vertical direction only. It cannot generate a horizontal reaction. Okay. Both of those supports are pinned supports, so they have a pin that connects the beam to the support, if you like, um, and that means that, that there are uh, no moment reactions generated at either support, so the moments at A and B are both zero. Okay, uh, this is a plane frame technically, it's a, a truss we say has loads coming on at the nodes this beam can have loads which come on um, in the middle of the beam or at any point along the beam um, so therefore it doesn't satisfy our requirements for trusses um, but this beam uh, can generate moments internally even though we cannot generate moments at the end because of the support conditions if it were a built-in beam then then we could and we'll a look at cantilever beams after this one but for a plane structure then a structure that exists in a plane a planar structure uh, we have available the three uh, equilibrium equations so forces in the vertical direction and we'll use this convention y in the vertical direction x in the horizontal direction and then z out of the page, uh, but but Z either out or in, but generally the right hand rule says out of the page um, is positive. But because we're dealing with planar structures, then we're only really considered, considering moments around the Z axis, uh, and therefore um, uh, forces only in the Y and X direction. So forces in the X direction. Uh, are equal to zero, the sum of them. Uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. And we also said that the sum of the moments about the z axis or about any point on the plane um, about the z axis are equal to zero. So with those three equations of static equilibrium then it's possible for us to generate three uh, equations and those three equations can help us to determine the three unknowns uh, the reaction at a in the y direction the reaction at b in the y direction and the reaction at a in the x direction. Okay, so if we take the first equation of static equilibrium, uh, we can determine that all the forces uh, acting in the x direction must equal to zero. We only have one force, um, and let's say for this beam we'll consider a vertical force P in the vertical direction, the y direction, and that acts a distance L divided by 2, so the midpoint of the beam, where the total length of the beam is L. Okay. Um, from our three equations of equilibrium, we can solve for the three unknown forces. P is a known force. These reactions are currently unknown. Um, so using equation 1, R AX is the only force acting horizontally, so that 
must equal zero um, to satisfy the sum of all the uh, vertical, sorry, horizontal loads uh, coming to zero. So we've already solved for our first unknown reaction, and we now know that this horizontal reaction must be zero. Moving on to the uh, equation two, the sum of forces in the y direction must equal zero. If we take upwards as being positive, we have one equation that says r a in the y direction uh, plus another force in the vertical direction upwards is r b y, so that's the reaction at b. And because p is acting downwards, we say it's negative, so minus p equals zero. Okay, we can rearrange that equation to find that r a y. Um, plus RBY is equal to P. And that's fairly intuitive. If you look at the reactions um, in the upwards direction, they must equal all the forces in the downwards direction, or all the forces in the upwards direction must equal all the forces in the downwards direction. The upwards direction, we've only got reactions, so those must, the sum of those must equal the P in the downwards direction, which is given by this rearranged equation that came from the second equation that we got from our uh, equations of equilibrium, static equilibrium. Okay. And then finally, if we take moments about a point, and we will take moments about this um, point here, point A, we've selected point A so that the lever arm for the forces or the reaction force AX and the reaction force AY they both act through that point and therefore the distance of those loads perpendicular to the action of, of the load the direction of the load is uh, is zero okay from from that point that we've selected and we can select any point on the plane uh, but because moment is a free vector then um, it doesn't matter where we take moments about uh, that we, we will get um, a consistent result so we've chosen to take moments about the a so that we can eliminate the moments due to both these reactions r a y and r a x so the remaining forces then that we have are p which acts at a distance l divided by two from that point A that we're considering and that we're going to take uh, moments as positive in the clockwise direction which actually is is we'll take our Z to operate in that direction which is against the right hand rule but we'll, we'll use that so that our moments act clockwise about that Z axis so clockwise P times L upon 2 minus anti-clockwise r b y multiplied by l okay the distance from the point we're considering at a to the point at which r b y acts perpendicular to the direction of action okay uh, and we have said that the sum of all those moments has got to equal zero to satisfy our equation of static equilibrium okay if we um, rearrange that, we can see that PL divided by 2 is equal to RBY times L. Um, we've just added RBY times L to both sides. Um, and then if we divide both sides by L, so we put an L down here and an L here, these Ls all cancel so that we get r b y is equal to p divided by 2 okay so we've now solved for this unknown r b y and that is um, equal to p divided by 2 okay um, we can now substitute r b y equals p divided by 2 into this equation our second let's call it 2a because it came from from 2 um, 
so we can now say that r a y plus p divided by 2 is equal to p and therefore if we subtract p divided by 2 from each side we can say uh, r a y is equal to p minus p divided by 2 which equals p minus half p is half p or p divided by 2 so r a y also equals we've solved all all three uh, unknowns uh, so this is equal to p divided by 2 which is actually fairly intuitive because if, if we put the p in the middle of that beam it's not surprising that that distributes um, and is reacted by an equal force both at um, point a and at point b as those two points are equidistant from the, the load p that we're applying so it's fairly intuitive but we've we've proved it using the uh, equations of static equilibrium